Hi, I'm Braden Gill. I'm a member of the student at Boston State University, Sylvans. Hi, I'm Paige Sumner, and I'm the treasurer of the Sylvans Club. And today we'll be talking about cross-cutting. So this is our M-tooth saw. M-tooths are cheaper and they're more durable, so they're used for our practice saws, especially for our less experienced competitors. They're less likely to stick, which makes it the perfect saw for our less experienced competitors to use. You want to get one that's similar in size to your competition saw. And this is your Pekka Raker. It is used for competitions, and it is faster to cut, but also less durable, and is prone to sticking, so it should be best used for experienced sawyers. So next thing you're going to need is the handles. It can either come in a straight size or a angled size. It depends on whatever preference you like. And the only thing we're missing now is a cant holder. Most schools have one made out of metal, like this, but you could also make one out of saw bucks and ratchet straps, if that's what you have. So next, let's talk about stands. You can either be a shoulder width or a farther distance depending on how you want it, and you should be a good enough distance away from the camp where it feels comfortable. And when you start sawing, you should get really low and have the full length of saw go across your body. So when you're sawing, if you need more traction, make sure you get a friend to give you a foot and stand beside you. Make sure that they are facing the opposite way that you are. That way you don't elbow anybody while you're cutting. So now let's talk about hand position. So you want your dominant hand to go on the bottom, and you want your non-dominant hand to go on the top. You want to have them as close together as possible on the saw, and you don't want to grip too tight. That way the saw can still move when you're going. This is what it would look like if you're left-handed, and this would look like if you're right-hand dominated. And this would look like if you have your non-dominant hand on the bottom. It's more likely to cut your arm with the non-dominant hand on the bottom. So now it's time to start your cut. Whenever you start your cut, you always want to start on a raker if it's a peg and raker saw. And you want to count out a certain amount of rakers, whatever you're comfortable with to start on. And now for the other person, whenever you have the ankle, you want to be as flat as possible while still holding the ankle. Before you start your cut, you want to count off so both you and your partner know when to start. Three, two, one. So when you're cutting, you want to make sure that you bend at your waist and your knees and not bending over, kind of in a squat. Make sure that you are pulling and not pushing the saw. When you get down to the bottom, you're going to have to kind of drop your hands if you can't get low enough. And it's not illegal, but you don't ever want to go down to a knee because you'll lose most of your power when you cut. To get really good at cross cutting, the key thing is to practice, practice, practice. If you don't practice, how do you know you're going to get good? You should practice with other people and through people to see who you work best with because sometimes you don't work great with a certain person, but you may work really good with another. And a good way to practice without cutting a cookie is to turn the saw upside down like this and to just practice pulling the saw across each other. When you do this, you want to make sure that you keep your saw really level. If you're rocking and you're changing your angle a whole lot, you're going to more likely to stick. You also want to make sure you use the whole saw and you're pulling all the way to use all your teeth. Once you've had plenty of practice and more comfortable using the saw and you get comfortable with a certain person, once you start pulling out all the way, you can push a little bit to give it back to go a little faster. Another thing that happens when you get comfortable with somebody is it can feel natural to pull the saw in towards your body while you're cross cutting, but this could cause the saw to bow which could then stick, so try to avoid doing that.
For lubricating the saws, we recommend a light coat of WD-40 before a competition that you then lightly wipe off. The purpose of lubricating a saw is not to prevent it from binding in the wood in our situation. So with the Southern Forestry Conclave, we're cutting on hardwood species, yellow poplar and sweet gum, that do not have a lot of pitch and do not have a lot of resin, so that's not gonna cause your saw to stick. And we're cutting on relatively small pieces of wood in a situation where they're really not gonna pinch the saw. The teeth of the saw cut a wider kerf or a wider slot than the width of the back of the saw. So that's not the purpose of lubrication. The purpose of lubricating a crosscut saw for the Southern Forestry Conclave is to ensure that the teeth will cut the chips, the rakers will chisel them out, and they fall into this area in between the raker and the tooth called the gullet. If the gullets fill with chips and those chips do not fall out of the saw when the saw exits the wood and you pull the saw back into the wood, a full gullet will not allow the saw to cut any further. So the real purpose of lubrication is to get these gullets to empty of chips. So if you use actually too much lubricant or too viscous a lubricant, you'll see it can actually cause chips to bind in the gullets, which is the complete opposite of what you want to do with lubricating a crosscut saw. The four key takeaways from this video are practice, 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 and always keep your dominant hand on the bottom. Make sure that you stay level as you drop at your waist and use the whole saw. Thank you for watching our Sylvan's video. Axum! Axum.